This is Twit. Apple has increased the intelligence of their inte- already intelligent. Now it's more intelligent, Leo. <laughs> super intelligent. <laughs> super intelligent. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, okay. But it's. Uh, I am impressed by how much they're really focusing on this. Uh, how God, how many hours have we spent on this podcast talking about tracking? Uh, this is the Intelligent Tracking Prevention, ITP, which now goes to, uh, they're calling it version 2.1. The beta release of 12 of iOS 12.2 and Safari 12.1 on Mac OS, which will be High Sierra and Mojave. Um, they include this updated version of intelligent tracking protection. Um, um, one of these things is so obscure. I thought, okay, wait, I had to read this several times to get a hold of it. So their, their stated goal is to further reduce trackers ability to establish user identities across sites. That's of course what, that's what tracking is, right? To, to know that somebody who was at Facebook then went to Amazon and then went to, you know, did something at Google and then went over to, uh, dilly dilly wang, uh, uh, on <laughs> micro or, you know, so Don't forth. Anyway, me, <laughs> um, so, uh, previous versions of this intelligent tracking protection allowed domains that were classified with tracking capabilities to store what Apple called partitioned cookies. Um, and those were, um, Cookies keyed off of the top side. I'll explain partitioning in a second. Then they said, as of ITP 2.1, which is the more intelligent tracking protection, partition cookies are no longer supported and third parties classified with cross-site tracking capabilities now have to use the storage access API as opposed to the standard cookie API. So, so, so here's how Apple explains what they call verified partition cache. They, they said WebKit implemented partitioned caches more than five years ago. They said a partitioned cache means cache entries for third-party resources are double keyed to their origin and the first party top level domain and then down one. So like apple.com, you know, so .com is the top level. Apple.com is one step down. They said this prohibits cross site trackers from using the cache to track users. Okay. Now let me stop for a second. And so, so the problem that we have is that, that, uh, the good news is Apple has been alone has been alone in the industry, and I've saluted them always for by default. And this, here again, this is the tyranny of the default. By default, blocking third party cookies. Um, it, when I did that cookie forensics work years ago, I was compiling cookie um, are, are the 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 visitors to GRC compiling their cookie ha- their browser's cookie handling by browser and all of the browsers were like up near 100% except Apple alone with a very very low percentage in third party cookies enabled because it was off by default meaning that by default the almost all of the of the Apple visitors or Safari users who visited GRC had third-party cookies disabled. So very nice. However, um, a a by by getting up to various tricks with JavaScript, as we've talked about before, it's possible to circumvent the third-party protection by essentially establishing a first-party presence using JavaScript and iframes and other tricks. So what what partitioning does is very clever. It it's something that Apple alone has been doing, which tags the 
cookie that's being issued by in a first party context to the parent first party context that is like the the actual domain on the URL of the of the page where a first party cookie is being issued where it's different from the the page's primary domain that's what they mention when they say it's double keyed to the origin of the first party and to the the domain of the page so essentially it allows a cookie to be set by somebody for example an advertisement which is being hosted and then then getting around third party protection yet it no longer is so it allows it to be set but is it's only going to be retrieved when that domain is being visited from the original domain where it was issued, thus preventing tracking. Anyway, they say, at, c continuing with Apple's description, even so, our research has shown that trackers, in order to keep their practices alive under ITP, that's in Apple's previous intelligent tracking protection, have resorted to partitioned cache abuse. Therefore, we have developed the verified partitioned cache, <laughs> which is what makes the new one more intelligent. They said, when a partitioned cache entry is created for a domain that's classified by the intelligent tracking protection as having cross-site tracking capabilities, the entry gets flagged for verification. After seven days... If there's a cache hit for such a flagged entry, WebKit will act as if it has never seen this resource and load it again. The new response is then compared to the cached response. So basically, WebKit is faking it out, saying, huh, don't know about you, when in fact it does. The new response, but, but that, that's only in the case uh, if it's, greater than seven days it'll then it'll compare the cached response to the new response if they match in the ways we care about apple wrote for privacy reasons the verification flag is cleared and the cache entry is from that point considered legitimate however if the new response does not match the cache entry the old cache entry is discarded and the new one is created, meaning the tr tracking is blocked because it, it won't be returning the, the one that it had from before. The new one is created with the verification flag set and the verification process starts all over. And if everybody's just completely gone cross-eyed listening to this description, I don't blame you. As I said, I had to read it several times in order to say, what, 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 what? Um, and so this is what this is the ex, the extent to which Apple has engineered tracking protection. So I again I tip my hat to them. I'm I'm glad they're on our side and that they're doing this. Um, the upshot of this is that third party cookies are blocked by default. Also, um, the the another thing that they're doing is that session cookies for domains not visited for 30 days are deleted. So you can still have the, I want to remain logged in, but, but if you don't go back to a, to a domain where you said you wanted to be logged in, like Google or Apple or Facebook or, or you know, something you're doing en enough, if not, if you don't go back within 30 days, it will prune that. And this is Apple, you know, trying to get control of this massive cookie abuse that I that we talked about with our picture of the week, where there are just so many ridiculously large cookies now that it's hard for for them to be used for the actual valid purpose for which they were intended. And the other subtle thing is cookies can be can be set in two ways. Nor the normal way of setting a cookie is to receive it in as, as a set cookie header 
in a response from the web server. That's how it's traditionally been done. And you want those to both be uh, marked as secure, meaning the cookie will can be only be read over HTTPS. And you want it to be also flagged as HTTP only, meaning only with the HTTP protocol, not scripting. The, the reason that's important is that you want to keep the cook. You don't want your scripting on the page to be able to see cookies, which may ha have sensitive content in them. That is, you know, like to allow uh, session hijacking if the cookies value were readable by script. This, but that's one way of setting the cookie. The other way is there is a, a document.cookie property that the document object model that we talked about last week, the DOM, maintains. So script is able to set cookies. Now, this more intelligent tracking protection is, is separating cookies received from a web server, which are first-class cookies, from those that are set by script on the page. Cookies that are set by browser script are removed after seven days. So that, again, that's one of the ways, for example, that, that tracking is being done and, and Apple in seriously looking at where all these cookies are coming from is working to pare this down. And so cookies set by script only get to last a week and then they are removed. So uh, again, uh, hats off to Apple for continuing to come up with ways. Basically, you know, they're struggling not to break anything that we want to have work while in while deliberately breaking all of the clever workarounds that trackers are are the, the extent to which trackers are going. And think about that. Think about the extent to which tracking is is being like just held onto. Uh, it, it suggests that it is really valuable for for a advertising services and others to maintain a grip on users and profile where they go. The fact that they're that they're willing to go to such degrees. So again, Apple is alone in the industry. I mean, even in disabling something as simple as delay, dis disabling third-party cookies by default. There was a point at which IE, I don't remember which IE it was, a, a while ago, Microsoft said, yeah, we're going to turn off third-party cookies. There was such an uproar from you know, the industry that they ended up never shipping a browser that had third-party cookies disabled, even though Apple al always has. Safari uh, has that.